Good morning. Good morning. This is a wonderful Sunday morning. Yes, it was a, a little foggy on the way in, but we're here. We're both now. So, this is October 30th, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Oh my, how time flies. Welcome to service this morning. I ask that, um, and I would well, like, first of all, I thank you for spending the time doing the prelude uh, in silence to prepare our hearts and minds to receive the Holy Spirit. So, it's a blessing to have you here. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. And guests this morning, we're all family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the blessing of your presence this morning and your support of the sacred life of this congregation. Thank you. Well, I, as always, I have a few announcement, uh, announcements. And last week, a company came to clean our building and remove the mold and the dust and anything else that might cause the patchwork to call for me. Things like that during the sermon. And we also have some members who are allergic to mold and dust that have been unable to regularly come to church for that reason. Uh, there was an ozone machine running and it sanitized everything. And you're glad. I can feel a little difference today. Um, there will be a journey prayer. I, I don't know if all of you are aware or familiar with uh, Kanika Bigham Sai, who is running to be a bishop, um, and there is a prayer meeting. They have been praying for her, uh, and I received an email. There's a prayer meeting via Zoom tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, if you're interested in participating, you can visit via Zoom, or you can just dial in with your phone. I can provide that information for you after service. Um, there's a local senior citizens, well, Sterling Heights local Senior, senior Citizens is sponsoring an outreach for veterans. Um, it's called Helping Heroes. And it's going to be on Tuesday, December 6th at 11 in the morning. And they're going to need volunteers to sort donated items and fill care bags uh, for the VA hospital and veterans outreach uh, food pantry. And so they'd like volunteers to sign up in advance um, to help. And if you can do that, call them at 586-446-2750 if you can help. Um, and Sterling Heights UMC will be collecting the following items um, through November 27th, new items only. Um, individually wrapped rolls of toilet paper and paper towels cleaning supplies, uh, full-sized boxes of tissue, disinfecting wipes, dish soap and sponges, laundry detergent, and deodorant. And so please uh, bring those things so that we can uh, help to make a difference in the lives of veterans. Okay, several more reminders. Emmaus will meet on Tuesday, November 1st, in here in the church parlor, 10 o'clock. Bible study will meet on Thursday, November 3rd at 11 in the church parlor. And Bible study will be uh, on chapter 21, The Martyrs, from Revelation uh, 6, uh, Revelation 6. And we're going to discover the faith of those who accept Christ during the tribulation and are martyred for their faith. And that's going to help us to see the many reasons that we are commanded to live out, uh, to go into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ now. Um, so 
Again, just a reminder, Emmaus is going to meet and hear the church on Tuesday. And that reminder is especially for me because I have been known to go to prayer when we are at the church. Um, there has been a mum planted in memory of Russ Canary and Clayton Warfield. It's at the entrance of the south side, on the south side of the building. And thank you, uh, Jenny and Gail, for remembering Russ and Clayton through adding to the building beauty of our building. Actually, Carol Steinle was at there. Oh, Carol Steinle? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so remember my office hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10 to 1, if you'd like to meet with me. Um, it doesn't have to be about anything sad or upsetting. It could be just to sit down and, and have a talk with the pastor. Um, our annual church conference, Sunday, November 13th, SPRC meets at 6.30, and the conference itself is 7.15. And the theme is wellness, the road God calls us to travel. And we we'll put the scripture, Ephesians 4, 1 through 7. Uh, just a word from that, uh, from the message. I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. And we, just a reminder, all ministry and committee chairpersons should have reports to me no later than November 1st, today, if possible. Okay, this is long as one, isn't it? A couple of requests, no, almost as long as this one. A couple of requests have been announced over the past couple of months. If you're willing to serve on one of the church committees, leave singing, singing after service. Uh, no one's come forward yet. But prayerfully consider what God is calling you to do and how you can do that. And remember to sign up for coffee hour. There's a sign up sheet uh, in, the, in the parlor. Um, and it's held on the last Sunday of the month to celebrate the birthdays of that month. Um, so no one signed up for October, so we won't be uh, having that celebration today. We will? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, yeah, so you know, I hear that there are a few of you who make tasty desserts. And so we'd love to try them. Um, if you have a key to the building, remember to make sure that you're, you've locked up when you leave, everything is locked up. And if you have a meeting notice or a prayer request that you go on the bulletin or you know, know that someone that should be uh, removed from the prayers and concerns list, added or removed, email that to Marguerite by noon, no later than noon, on, on Wednesday. And her email is in the bulletin. Are there any other announcements to be made at this time? Poinsettia order forms are out. They're due November 13th. Okay, they, are they due the same day as the charity conference? Yeah. Okay, so get those order forms for your NCS. Any, any other announcements? Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. If you'll please stand as you are able to do so and join me now in our responsive call to worship. Trust in the eternal one. Rejoice in God's unfailing love. Celebrate the forgiveness that is ours. We come to sing with gladness.
it's now time for our praises, prayers, and concerns. Let's start with those praises this morning. And we, you know, we have the continual concern for, uh, for our nation and the leaders of this nation and the churches and families of this nation. Um, we all need to be under uh, or in the palm of God's all powerful hand. I invite you to bow with me as I pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, first of all, for the, the, the cleaning, the cleansing of this building that will enable all members to worship comfortably. We thank you, O oh God, for Glenda being back with us and feeling much, much better. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for the healing of grand nieces and nephews. We thank you for the care that they were given in the hospital, and we thank you for your loving and healing touch. Lord, we come to you this day just thinking about all of the things that are happening in this nation that are not typical of what this nation does. Relatives of leaders being attacked in their homes. So many things have changed. So many hearts have been hardened. And so God, we thank you for your ability to touch and move those hearts and minds. And we ask, oh God, that you would grant us as your people the ability, the wherewithal, somehow to do what you have called us to do, to go into the world and make disciples for its betterment and for their salvation. Lord, we ask that you would continue to pour out your, your love upon us that we might we might accept that love to ourselves and pass it on to others. Thank you, Lord, that you are a loving God, that we are your people, and like you, we love not just one another, but everyone. Father, we ask that you would be with those, as, uh, those of us as we prepare to vote. Let us not be influenced by the media, by television commercials and radio commercials, oh God. Let us do homework. Let us seek your face and your leading and your guidance. Not human rationale, but divine influence, oh Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much that you are our God and we are your people. We thank you for the many, many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth in this place and others. Lord, we ask that you would place legislation and politicians in place that would not destroy that freedom. Thank you, Lord that you are our hope, and that we always have hope. And so, Father, we give this prayer to you with the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say the Lord's Prayer. Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
to our time of tithes and offerings, remembering always the many gifts that God has given us and the direction that we share these with our neighbors around the world and here in our little corner of the world, Sterling Heights, going out into the world to make disciples of all nations for the betterment of the world and for the building of God's kingdom in Jesus' name. So please be generous with your gifts as the church needs them to carry out its mission as directed by our Lord and Savior. The usher will now please wait upon us. No? Okay. The, we will then just bring up the offering and uh, sing praises. <laughs>
Our scripture reading comes to us this morning from Psalm 32. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I thought to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray to you while there is still time, that they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with the songs of victory. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. seven verses, but as I started writing, I decided to do the whole chapter, so I do apologize. But we have here two Bibles, two weapons. I invite you to bow with me as I pray. Gracious and loving Father, our eternal God, I ask that you would use your servant this day that you would touch me, that you would speak to me and through me and with me. I ask, O oh Lord, that you would increase as I decrease, so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, my Lord, and my Redeemer, my all in all. Amen. Psalm 32 is a penitential psalm. It's one of confession, and it's also a psalm of praise and adoration, and it is a psalm of instruction. In verses 1 and 2, the, the psalmist acknowledges having transgressions and iniquity that have been forgiven by the Lord. Transgression is rebellion, and iniquity is simply sin. So the psalmist is happy to have been pardoned by the Lord for the sin and rebellion it fosters. The Hebrew word for forgiveness is nasa. It's a verb that means lifted up. Forgiveness means that in, in God's eyes, our sin is lifted up. Our sins are lifted up and they're out of sight. Forgiveness means that in God's eyes, our sin is taken away. Some translations say that our sins are covered over by God. And not only does God lift our sin, God also removes the condemnation that sin brings. 
means our slate is wiped clean. However, there is a condition for receiving the blessing of forgiveness. You see, forgiveness is not a right. We don't get it because we sit in the pews every Sunday. We don't get it because we say grace before our meals. <coughs> we don't get it because we're nice persons. The prerequisite for getting forgiveness is to the Lord to be fulfilled before it is granted to us. Excuse me, there is a prerequisite to the Lord to be fulfilled before it is granted to us. It's conditioned upon its being, its recipient being without receipt. <coughs> now we all miss the mark, and none of us are seen free. <coughs> Let's just back up a little bit and renew the enemy's attempt to destroy the clarity of this message. There is a condition for receiving the blessing of forgiveness. You see, forgiveness is not a right. We are not entitled to it. It is a privilege. But there's a prerequisite to the Lord to be fulfilled before it's granted to us. Forgiveness is conditioned upon its recipient being without deceit. Now we all miss the mark and none of us are sin free and some of us can't tolerate being told that we're sinners but we all sin and fall short. Nor do we deserve or can we earn forgiveness. However, the Lord grants freedom and release from our sin when our spirit is free of deceit. In other words, forgiveness is granted when we are completely honest before the Lord. We cannot get around it. God who created us knows what is in our hearts and minds, whether or not we acknowledge that. We may be able to deceive ourselves and, and even those who are around us, but God will and can never be deceived. You know, because of Adam and Eve, our human nature is one of sinfulness, and, and God knows we will be perfectly free of sin on the other side of glory. So forgiveness and the resulting happiness is contingent upon being what God commands us to be. Honest with God and willing to acknowledge our sins, our shortcomings. The Lord will not condemn us for deceit if our hearts are free of deceitfulness, treachery, and dishonesty. And, and there is no free pass to, to live a cycle of intentional rebellion because God will forgive us, or God's, excuse me, because God will forgive us when we say we're sorry. We have to mean it sincerely. We know that the wages of sin is death, and, and that means eternal damnation when we do not repent, confess, and, and acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God who died for our sins on the cross. And as we become indwelled by the Holy Spirit, we sin less, but we have day-to-day -day sins still for which we must genuinely repent and confess if we truly desire to please God. Otherwise, our sins will kill us out. You know, there's a price to pay for for holding on to sin and acting as if we do not and have not committed it, or the sin that we commit is not really all that bad because we're not robbing banks and killing and stealing and other things. We think that a little sin is not bad because it's not on the upper end of the sin scale. 
And that's a human saying still, guys. Sin is sin. God already knows about our sins, and, and yet we act as if we do not have them, as if somehow God will believe our delusion. <coughs> Galatians 6 7 reminds us do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you will reap what you sow. God disciplines us. And for the psalmist, the weight of God's hand of constant discipline had both spiritual and physical effects. The psalmist said, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned every day, every night. Have you ever been out of step with God and had your conscience pound you so intensely that it disturbed your peace, your rest, even your health? We cannot rest, and lack of rest affects all areas of our health, from spirit to body to mind to heart. The psalmist seemed to understand the root of his or her, because we don't really know that the psalmist were all men. His or her misery was ignored and unconfessed sin. The psalmist understood that. Sometimes we are miserable because of unconfessed sin, and we may not even make the connection, but it's true. Often we are in denial about our sin, but sin is pervasive. When we entertain sin without admitting that it is in our hearts, it turns into something bigger and more sinister. Believe it or not, we can't control that. If we continue to let sin linger, we eventually lose our ability to, to, to do anything about it. That, that is why we have the Holy Spirit. When we have something done something sinful, then the Holy Spirit tweaks our heart and, and makes it understand that we are out of step with God and then compels us to do something about it. When we hear the Spirit but ignore it, our minds and hearts become burdened. If we continue denial, even the smallest sin becomes pervasive in other areas of our lives. So the psalmist had enough wisdom to clean house and confess the sin and rebellion to relieve guilt and pressure, and the Lord granted forgiveness. You know, after receiving forgiveness, the psalmist has an epiphany. This forgiveness thing was a lifesaver, and the psalmist praised the Lord about it. Lord, we, those of us who are the faithful, all need to pray to you in a time where you may be found. For when the circumstances of life rush in like a flood, you lift us up so that we do not drown in the waters of judgment. The Lord lifts us out of dangerous waters in the same way the Lord lifts our transgressions. Lord, you alone deflect danger seen and unseen. Lord, you alone shield us from the ravages of the storm. Lord, you and only you are our hiding place. For you keep us under the shelter of your wings and become our refuge. You and you alone can deliver us. The Lord is our hideaway. We are hidden in the secret place of the Most High God who protects us from trouble and surrounds us with victory and deliverance as only God can. The Lord delivers us when we need forgiveness, when we need healing, when we need hope that surpasses our circumstances and our understanding. 
The Lord not only wants to give testimony and praise about the, the psalmist, rather, not only wants to give testimony and praise about the Lord's forgiveness, the psalmist has become the resident expert, the, the subject matter expert, or SME, as they call it in corporate America, on showing others how to follow the plan to forgiveness. The psalmist has taken on the awesome task of instructing others using the lesson he learned from sin. Confession. Forgiveness. The freedom to be lifted up out of the dregs of sin and rebellion. You know, that confirms that, that we serve a God that not only delivers us from our troubles, but gives deeper meaning, but it gives deeper meaning to what the Apostle Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 1 when he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and of the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves were consoled by God. The psalmist wanted to give the same solace to others who were bound to experience the, the weight of sin and the unforgiveness cycle. You know, sometimes we hold on to things uh, of the, the hearts of unforgiveness, thinking that the people who, who we're not forgiving don't deserve to be forgiven. We do not make that call. And God is the one who tells us that we all must forgive. Because if we don't, he won't. Proverbs 13, 21 reminds us that misfortune pursues sinners, but prosperity rewards the righteous. The, the price of holding on to sin yields torment. And, and the psalmist goes on to give words of hope so that others will be encouraged to acknowledge their sin, expose their own sin so they can fight it, disarm it through confessing it and accepting God's grace and steadfast love. The psalmist told them about the anguish and, and suffering sinfulness brings and, and then reminded them that the hope that comes from trusting in the Lord, that is steadfast love, encompasses us. And so it is fitting to end by saying, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We celebrate steadfast love and joy and happiness that can be received only through God's grace. We celebrate the peace that comes with the benefit of humble and sincere confession. The God we serve is awesome. He gives us a way out. And all we have to do is take that way and be forgiven. Amen. Amen. And amen.
still throughout the days to come, Lord, throughout this journey. Remember that God brings us the joy of salvation, that God is a forgiving God, and that it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to do those things that are difficult in our own strength, in our own wisdom and intelligence. <coughs> and know that God will lift us up to be perfect before him. And so as we go throughout the week, remember forgiveness. Remember that we were forgiven, and we should forgive in the same way that we have been forgiven. Amen. Amen. And amen.